DreAllDay.com. What's up, everybody? Dre all day. Someone asked me a question about preparing a speech, speaking in public. Uh, you might be nervous, or you don't have a lot of experience. How do you get ready, or what? What are some tips that I could give to that person? Well, me personally, I'm probably one of. I guess I'm in the minority that I don't get nervous when speaking in public. I know that a lot of people do. It's funny. I was at a Toastmasters meeting several months ago, and this woman came up to the stage and she said she heard someone say that. This guy, he got asked to speak at a funeral. And when he went up to the funeral to deliver the eulogy, he was so scared that he would rather be in the casket than be at the microphone because it was so it was so scary to him to stand in front of a group of people and speak, even at, a, at somebody's funeral, someone that he loved that had passed away. And I know that studies have shown, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this if you follow anything about public speaking, that people fear speaking in public more than they fear dying, which means if somebody had a choice between dying and speaking in public, they'd rather die, which is crazy, but it's, it's true. People are really afraid of speaking in public. So let me just go, let me just do it this way. I'll do it point by point style guide, guidelines here. If I was talking to someone who's brand new at speaking, you've never spoken in public before, you're about to do it for the first time, what would I tell that person to do to get ready for their speech? This is what I would tell you to do. I would tell you to memorize your speech. What are you gonna say? Memorize the entire thing. So you can write it out if you want to. You can write points. So make, so once you get the theme of what you're gonna say, then you had the rest kinda in your head. Or you can write it out word for word. If you know, like you already know the exact date and time you're gonna be speaking so you can get ready. If it's a month away, if it's a week away, if it's a few days and you can plan the whole thing out, I would say memorize it. The reason I would say memorize it is because you're prepared. And the only time that people get nervous and people get anxious before certain types of performances, you might get nervous or anxious because a lot of people, but a lot of times that nervousness and anxiousness builds up more when you feel like you're not prepared. People kind of get unsettled when they know they're not prepared for something. But when you're prepared, you're less nervous. You might still get a little bit nervous, of course, like even a basketball player, you might be the greatest basketball player in the world and you practice all the time and before the game, you still get butterflies in your stomach. That doesn't mean that guy's not prepared. It means his body's getting ready because it knows it's a performance coming up. But he's not nervous, anxious because he's not ready because he feels like, oh man, I'm not in shape or I didn't work on my jump shot enough he, or I don't know the plays or something like that. I would think if you're the more things that you can take care of ahead of time that you already that your body and your mind already knows is taken care of, the less reasons you'll have to be nervous and the less you'll feel that feeling. So I would say number one, memorize what you're gonna say. The entire thing word for word. And any of you can memorize anything. Because if you think about your favorite song, you know it word for word without even having to hear the song at the same time. So you can memorize it. If you go over it enough times, you can memorize anything. So it's not that you can't, it's just that you haven't or that you won't. So memorize what you're gonna say, that's the first thing. A few other things that people say, I've heard people say, hey, picture everyone in the audience as naked. And I think that can kind of work because when you picture everybody naked, then you picture people, they don't feel as powerful. People don't feel as intimidating when you picture everyone naked because we all come into the world naked and we all, we all gonna die eventually one day. That's how we are naked is exactly who we are as a person. The clothes are a mask that we put on our bodies to cover things up because number one is just a public, is a, a normal thing in public. That's the, the accepted form of expressing yourself in public. But at the same time, we all are pretty much the same. We all got 10 fingers, 10 toes, most of us, two legs, two arms, two eyes, one mouth, one nose and two ears. So if you picture everyone naked, that can help take away the intimidation factor of an audience. And those are the two things that I would say would be most important for someone who's speaking in public for the first time. And the third thing is this, you got to go through it. It's not going to just happen. You're not going to just automatically become, you're not going to just go from being crazy nervous and I feel like I can't do this to it's just perfect and easy overnight. And it's definitely not going to happen until you start actually doing it. So the first thing you got to do is go out there and actually get some experience. You got to go out there and start speaking to people in public. You got to go out there, have your stuff memorized, prepare as much as you possibly can and get the experience. That's the only way it is going to happen. And remember this, most people are more afraid of speaking in public than they are of dying. So guess what? When you get up there and you start speaking in public, you're doing the thing that most of them are afraid to do.
So they are already looking up to you because, like I said, if you speak to an audience of 10 people, there's a pretty good chance that nine out of those 10 people would rather be, they rather stay right there in that seat than be doing what you're doing, even if you're messing up. Even if you're messing up on your words and you're stuttering and you forgot what you were gonna say, they much rather stay in their seat and watch you than be up on the stage and do better than you, do the same as you, do worse than you. So you're already doing what most people are afraid to do. So you have nothing to be nervous about. You're doing the thing that they wish they could do. That means you're putting yourself in that top 1% of life because most people are gonna spend their whole lives watching other people do things that they wish they had the heart to do. So when you get up there on the stage, you're already in the 1%. Think about that before you go up on the stage. And another thing I would say, last thing I would say, we had these things in our bodies and our brains called mirror neurons. And mirror neurons are how many of you ever watched somebody do something that you had never done before? You were about to do it for the first time, so you watched somebody else do it, and then you kind of had an idea of how to do it. The mirror neurons in our body are what allow us to do that. So what that means is if I said, hey, I want you to do this, this dribbling drill, and you had never did it before, and then you watch me do it, and then you're able to do it a little bit. You might not do it as well as me. You might not be perfect. You might mess up. But you have some idea just from watching me without even practicing just from watching me you have an ability to do it the reason i mentioned mirror neurons is if you're going to speak in public and you want to relax yourself watch some youtube videos of someone speaking who's very comfortable speaking so you can watch a comedian doing stand-up comedians are perfect because comedians they never know so people are even going to laugh at their jokes they might bomb on stage and just be terrible and get booed out of the building but they still go up there and they got to be relaxed and they got to command the room you can watch an actor. You can watch a speech giver. Somebody giving a speech. The president or somebody. Anybody. Somebody winning a, a Grammy Award or winning an Oscar Award or a Golden Globe. Going up to the stage and giving a speech in public. So watch somebody doing the thing that you want to do. Even if you haven't done it before, the mirror neurons in your brain automatically start working. You don't have to tell them anything. You don't have to do any special techniques or any rituals or anything. Just watching someone do something like that will get your brain starting to think like that. It's the same thing works in basketball. Like, if you're about to play a game of basketball and you wanna play like Stephen Curry, you can watch some Stephen Curry videos right before your game or right before your practice. It doesn't mean you're gonna become Stephen Curry, but what it does is get the mirror neurons in your brain firing that you'll start to have a little bit of that, you'll start to have a little bit of that idea of what you watched will start to translate into physical manifestation. And if you do it enough, you'll start to get more and more and more and more of it. Of course, you gotta add the practice and the preparation, but watching it helps the mirror neurons in your body fire and you'll start doing kind of like what you saw. So those are the tips I would give someone who's going into public speaking that has no idea what to do. Any of you have any questions about any other topic, whether that be, doesn't have to be about speaking, but it can, anything off the court, non-basketball related, because I know that basketball stuff I do on my other channel, Leave them in the comments to this video or any other video, and I'm going to get to it. Work on your game. Dre, all day.